Last night, the Wolves went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the top team in the Central. Tied at two after two, Keegan Colasar notched the game winner for a 3-2 victory over Grand Rapids, extending their streak to three. This afternoon, the Wolves host the Texas Stars in a matchup for the second time in four days here at Allstate Arena. This is the fifth of eight meetings head-to-head -head this season between the Wolves and Stars. Billy, they are in a stretch where they face off four times in ten days. Between these uh, streaks, they had two months off. The re rivalry reunited. Well, it is a good rivalry. Texas has had the upper hand the last few years, quite honestly, but I think the Wolves can uh, do some damage to the Texas hopes of making the playoffs. They sit in fifth, and with that number of games coming up and the Stars coming off this road trip where they have not won a lot, uh, it's a good chance for the Wolves to keep them outside and keep themselves moving up the ladder. So, solid hockey, though. It's a game that uh, is always tough to play in because Texas are a relentless squad. Great work ethic. Wolves have taken three of the first four so far this season as the Wolves getting ready to take the ice for game four of their five game homestand. Let's go downstairs so you can enjoy the opening show. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the west end of the ice surface and welcome your Chicago Wolves. Please welcome number 94, the Chicago Wolves mascot, Skates. Let's meet tonight's starting lineup. Starting on defense, number two, Nick Hay. And number 32, Zach Whitecloud. On left wing, number 10, Curtis McKenzie. On right wing, number 20, Keegan Colasar. 
At center, number 18, T.J. Tynan. And starting in goal, number 35, Oscar Dance. These two teams met Thursday morning here at the Allstate with the Wolves skating to a 3-1 victory. Hello there, hockey fans. Alongside Billy Gardner, I'm Jason Shaver. It's time now for our game day favorites presented by Bud Light. Bud Light, game day's favorite light lager. Wolves are three games into this homestand. All three games, very close contest, all victories for Chicago. That's a good sign. The Wolves have not played that well overall this year at home. On the road, they've been spectacular. But now, all of a sudden, these tighter games, closer games, not a lot of shots, not a lot of great opportunities, but the Wolves are squeaking by. And these are uh, great, I think, games at this time of the year to be playing. Those tight games are getting strong goaltending. Their defense has been solid. It's been fun to watch. They have five in a row. Boy, what a nice uh, stand this would be to win all five. This is game four. Wolves had the empty netter Thursday morning, but in essence, all three of the wins for Chicago by a single tally. Let's rejoin Chris Dubiel, the Wolves public address announcer. As they line up with the Wolves players on the blue line for today's anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and join Wayne Mesmer in the singing of our national anthem with colors presented by Cub Scout Pack 504. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was blare oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Well, let's have a look at our Wolves uh, starters and scratches. They are presented by Illinois Bone and Joint Institute. Illinois Bone and Joint Institute. Move better, live better. Visit IBJI.com. Curtis McKenzie will be on the left side. Keegan Colasar on the right. TJ Tynan, of course, in the middle. On events, we have Nick Haig and Zach Whitecloud. Oscar Dansk gets the nod in net. And our scratches today will be Kevin Law, Jake Bischoff, Thomas Hika, and Reed Duke. The Allstate goaltender matchup. Allstate, are you in good hands? Oscar Dance for the Wolves will make his team high. 28th appearance. He's 2-1 in his last three starts with the Wolves. At the other end for Texas, Landon Bow is back in Austin after spending a two-week stint with the Dallas Stars. He returned to the Stars' crease on Friday night, stopping 28 of 31 in a 4-3 shootout loss against the Grand Rapids Griffins. Rocky Thompson won a Memorial Cup with Windsor two years ago. He said right now his team is playing very resilient. They're creating chances and battling injuries. Also winning a Memorial Cup with Edmonton is the head coach of the Texas Stars, Derek Laxdahl. His team is dealing with a depleted lineup as well. They have picked up points in three of their last four road games. The first period of Chicago Wolves hockey is presented by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Kia dealers. Billy, two games in four days, a repeat of Thursday morning, or do you expect something different this afternoon? I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I would think it's a, obviously Texas coming in here and losing, 
uh, this past week. Uh, they'd be hungry to get a victory and uh, climb uh, closer to a playoff uh, position. And of course, the Wolves are on a nice roll. They're playing solid hockey overall. And with games in hand that they do have, they can be in first place. So there's a lot on the line for both these clubs. In Texas, uh, the road record not so good. The Wolves' home record getting much better, obviously, with three straight victories. And four in a row overall, three straight on this homestand. On home ice for Chicago, we welcome in our NHL Network viewers. You're watching the young prospects of the Vegas Golden Knights and the Dallas Stars. Ahead off of Garyanov, who chases down Zach Whitecloud. Whitecloud trying to play the puck ahead. Dowling got a piece of it. Dowling has goals in three of the last four games for the Stars. Here's Mersh, who grew up in Skokie, Illinois, got into the point. Hansen shot turned away by Dansk. Hansen had a goal and an assist Friday in Grand Rapids. Good early save, even though it was an easy one for Oscar Dan since uh, he has not played on this homestand yet. Lesperance in, and Dance turns it away. Lesperance second in the league in goal scoring. Here's a shot from the point by Hanley. Turned away by Dance, so some early jump for the Stars, who traveled from Grand Rapids yesterday after playing on Friday. It was the Wolves on home ice last night, knocking off the Griffins. Here's Daniel Carr, he leads the AHL in goal scoring. With 28, one more than Lesperance. They're both on the ice right now. There's a lot of categories that the young man has uh, the lead in. Daniel Carr, goals, points, plus, minus. Spectacular year. Eric Condra in his own zone for Texas. Collected by Hanley. He'll hand it off. His partner, Bayreuther, bounces it in on Dance. He goes to the net, and that forces the Wolves keeper to cover it up. It's four shots already for the Texas Stars, though, and I'm sure they wanted shoot the puck as much as possible on Oscar Dansk. You can see his road record uh, as of late versus Texas at least at home 2 on one So nice goals against average for Oscar. Maybe that is one of the reasons why he has the nod in this game after three terrific games in a row by Max Legassi. More and off the face off. Won the draw and takes control. Put it off the side of the net. Stefan Mateau through the hip. The puck goes free to Gleason. His shot off the kick plate. Nyberg pinching from the point. Here's McClure trying to send it back down low. Glove on the ice and the puck is near it. Would that be a hand pass? I was wondering the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much glued up. Mm -hmm. Next to America's favorite light lager. Yeah, they got a lot of Bud Light in that one, didn't they? <laughs> Wong ahead from again. Back after it is John Nyberg. Uses the net to avoid the pressure. His pass off of Hargrove and out. Zach Leslie regrouping with his partner Coglin ahead. Tipped in by Wong. The Wolves will change up the troops. Uh, having played last night, the Wolves uh, lethargic, but a little slower here out of the gate. They've had some terrific starts, especially to all the periods uh, recently. I think with him playing last night in a very intense game. Calderon in tight, denied. A shot Ooh. hit out in front. Boy, that glanced off of Maskerin. Right. Phelan keeps seeing it alive. Maskerin gives it back to Phelan in the corner. Trying to break away from the defense of Weiss. Phelan looking to reverse back. A shoulder by Weiss knocks him down. Gallant will clear it out to center. Weiss. After the loose puck down the left wing, put it towards the net, and Landon Bow will make his first stop of the afternoon. And the first shot, as you mentioned, with some speed. Matthew Weiss down the wing, steered away nicely by Bow. And just going back to my final thought on uh, last night's game, was such an intense playoff style of game. A lot on the line for both clubs, and I think sometimes the next game, the next day, is a little harder and more difficult to prepare and get ready for. I think a few shifts in, everybody getting involved, it'll be fine for the Wolves. I think the Texas Stars are excited about uh, getting home tonight after a long road trip. Now this is in the last 10 this is their eighth road game. They had a four game road trip in the Midwest went home for two against Tucson then back to the Midwest for four more that ends this afternoon. A nice thing about the af afternoon face off they have an eight o'clock flight out of O'Hare to get back home. Well, they face Milwaukee on Wednesday. Then the Wolves will be in Austin for a pair 
next weekend. Yeah, very excited to get to Texas. Some warm weather since uh, tomorrow, I think the high is 17. Tonight's 7 here in Chicago land. So uh, we arrive on the Thursday, and I know Friday's in the 80s. But uh, someone flips the switch because Saturday goes down to 56. So uh, get your bathing <laughs> suit ready for Friday. <laughs> Keegan Colasar had the game winner last night for the Wolves. He comes in to replace Tynan on the draw. Stick with us in the first intermission. TJ Tynan will be Billy's gaff at the line. Branson shot. Just missed in the stick side. Bo never saw it. Another great setup though. On getting down and into the corner. TJ Tynan picks the puck up and spots the defenseman available. Ariana on a two on two attack. Tried to thread the needle to Dowling who picks up along the backboards. He's battling with Tynan. Puck comes free. To McKenzie. McKenzie was the captain of the Stars a year ago. Took them all the way to the Calder Cup Finals where they lost to the Marlies in seven games. Derek Laxall recapping the series with us before the game today. Just loved the way his team came together a year ago. And the Marlies were just a, a terrific group of players. And certainly the underdog would have been the Texas Stars, but they're just a great, hardworking group. Always have been, and we could have easily won that. Gage Quinney getting some help from Masick along the backboards. Masick pinned up in the corner by Hansen. Carr comes in to try and work it free. Carr leads the American Hockey League in points with 66. Who is talking about the other categories? Also a plus 33, best in the league. Well, not often you get Forge leading in that category, but he certainly is by a couple over a teammate. And that teammate's a centerman. Gage Quinney plus 31, along with Zach Whitecloud, who's also plus 31. <laughs> For the top five and plus minus are on the Wolves roster. Trying to split the defense. Les Perrons. Boy, that deceptive speed was something Derek Laxdahl was talking about before the game with us. That's a great story. Uh, he's a big body, too. And not only is he a good skater, but his size. Very effective. Uses it well in between the rings. He's one of the best. Zach Leslie flying in, and the Wolves are offside. Well, Les Brunt's playing in the East Coast Hockey League, and this year he's played in the National Hockey League. So there he comes right through the gut. The Wolves do a pretty good job. Get a couple of sticks on him, and that really deters him getting through, and they stay with it. Oscar Dance able to pick it up, and this is T.J. Tynan at the other end. The last shift is feed back to the point. The Brandstrom is one-timer. I think it nicks the... Man coming out and changes the direction, but just misses the far post on Bo. Bo still with the only one shot on net. Six now for the Stars. Stars are out shooting Billy. Their opponents by 226 on the season. Mm. Well, Derek Laxdell was talking uh, to us about how good they were early in the year at scoring goals. It was rather easy for them. Now they've heavily relied on their power play to be successful in putting the puck in the net. They've come up dry quite a bit lately. McGann has shot and Bo turns it away. Both the Wolves and Stars top 10 in the league in both power play and penalty kill. As it's lofted in by Texas. Morn is after it. Played away by Leslie. Out comes Wong. Oh. Alex Gallant barely in his way in. Got in a fight last night with Dylan McElrath. And he got a call from his brother Brent Gallant, who plays in Cleveland. He said Brent's probably fought him eight times, so we were rehashing our <laughs> fisticuffs. Ooh. Here's Gallant looking for the goal, his second of the season. The shot went wide off the traffic, and Branstrom got it to the net, but Bo soaks it up, no rebound. 6 3 shot advantage, six minutes into this one. We are scoreless. Texas has the shot lead. Follow the Chicago Wolves on Facebook and win. Look for our pinned post about fighting with my family, starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and you could win tickets to Raw, Rosemount Health and Fitness Passes, and more. See Fighting With My Family in theaters now. So everybody involved, last couple of shifts for the Wolves. Legs should be going now, and ready to get uh, more opportunities. I mentioned the fact the first couple of games on this homestand, the Wolves struggled getting pucks on the net. But still had enough goals to win both those games. And last night's game was just a overall terrific, I think, game. One of the best of the year. Wolves have been good at striking first. The Iowa Wild and Chicago leading the league with 34 first goals. Mm. 
Curtis McKenzie trying to drag it away from Hanley. Tynan returning the puck down low for McKenzie. Has Kolasar in front. He shoots. He scores. Keegan Kolasar goals in back-to-back -back games. And Curtis McKenzie, what a birth week it's been for him. He extends his point streak to eight games. And I have to correct you. It's 35 games. <laughs> First goal. Yes, Tonight. you're right. <laughs> Since they just scored right after you mentioned that. Excellent work down low. And this is, uh, again, the trait, I think, uh, recently or maybe even all year. The Wolves in their battles offensively along the boards coming up with pucks. Tynan keeps it alive and available. And what a play that is from behind the net on the backhand by Curtis McKenzie. Two guys go to him. Not very good coverage on Kolasar. He's on his forehand and it's in the back of the net as soon as he gets it. 11 goals now for Keegan Kolasar. Last night's game winner, he became the ninth Wolves player to hit double digits in goals this season. Here's Carr on the attack. Tynan and McKenzie assist on the opening goal at 6.33. A bouncing puck out at center. And the Stars unable to get it up ice. Masick back in, tried to get it through to Quinney. Masick staying strong on the puck, hit by Condra. It's loose in the corner, and Quinney comes away with it. He feeds White Cloud. White Cloud walks it over to Hag, plays it off the boards, and dumps it back down low. Canceled out, Hansen and Carr. Quinney gets to the loose puck. He's immediately pinned up by Hetherington. It comes free, and Hansen takes the open ice. Eric Condra penetrates the blue, looking rank wide. And it's grabbed off the corner. Kamano a tough angle try and covering up Oscar Dansk. Earlier this year, Eric Condra had a five-point game in this building and was player of the week uh, by the end of that week. The veteran has played uh, some good years in the National Hockey League. There he is. NHL career, 366 games, 98 points. And he was on fire back uh, at that time. I think he slowed down. A bit as of late, but pretty much what Derek Laxler was talking to us about. You know, guys just did not put in the puck of the net. You mentioned Justin Dowling. He's a terrific player, but prior to this little uh, stretch that he's been on, he only had two goals in 25 games. And he's got three in the last four. Yeah. Hard to believe, though. Quality player. At the point, penalty call coming up against the Wolves. Bo goes to the bench for the extra attacker. And the league's second best power play will get a chance to try and tie up this hockey game as the Wolves, Branstrom, gets caught for holding. Yeah, you get the lead and you're playing back to back. You'd like to uh, not really take penalties if they're not that necessary. The Wolves have been so disciplined. Uh, one of the reasons I think they've been so good at times is because of their lack of taking penalties. They got into uh, some trouble a couple of months ago, and it was addressed by the coaching staff. They started to take six and seven minors a game, and we're getting bitten because of it. Wolves penalty kill ninth in the AHL at 82.7 percent. The Stars clicking at 23.8 percent. They have 49 goals on the power play. The Wolves get the quick clear. Good faceoff win. It's nice when you make them chase. Killed off 18 of 19 over the course of their last seven games. The Stars will look ahead. Here's Dowling controlling. He'll drop it off for Gleason. Moore plays it loose to Dowling. He leads the team in power play points with 19 to Dowling. Condra gets some help. Lasperance plays it to Gleason. Given back to Condra as they set up in formation. Dowling to Gleason. Walking the wrist shot off the traffic, poke free by Lesperance to Morin. Morin working the left side, sends it deep. Condra working the goal line, gives it back to Morin. Morin backhands it up top. Gleason holds, and he'll give it back to Morin. A deliberate power play so far for Texas as they steer to the point. Gleason steps in, an opening for Dowling. Let's it rip a block by Reinhardt, right back to Dowling. Down low for Condra. Condra takes it behind the cage. 
and finds Dowling who moves it out in front off of Reinhardt to the net. A block more. Oh, oh what a blocker stop by Oscar Dance. It's still loose in the slot and the Stars take it back. Les Bronze wanted to go to Dowling and Carr got the stick on it. Boy, the circus is no longer here, but what a save that is. Here's Condra resetting the offense. Good pressure by the Stars. Gleason's attempt. That was blocked by White Cloud up high, and the Wolves get it out. In a position where he was right in front of his goaltender, he really had to make a stop like that, White Cloud. Otherwise, I think that gets by, and Dance doesn't see it. Kamano gets some help to keep it alive. Bayreuther late in the power play goes to the port corner. Dowling's pass blocked out in front of the Wolves. Get Brandstrom back. Stars had about 90 seconds of pressure. Now the Wolves have a two-on-one. Branson working in. He shoots, and Bo made the save. Mateau was with Branson on the rush. Here's Hag at the point. A closer look and a block by Henley and out of play. Well, there's two glorious opportunities after a solid kill and some great goaltending by Oscar Dansk. But uh, it has to be your goaltender, and that's the difference. Goaltending has been terrific for the Wolves. There's a shot, the bouncing puck, the save, and then the desperation. Unbelievable. I'm not even sure how he recognizes where this puck is going after this initial stop. It's going to come back towards the net, and there's the blocker. Boy, that's going in top shelf. And he waves the wand. He must be a great digger in volleyball, huh? Como spikes out of the dirt. Terrific stop for Oscar Dansk. Have to find out how popular volleyball is in Sweden. <laughs> but he could make a living on the beach with digs like that. Here's Tynan setting up White Cloud. White Cloud, no shot lane as Hanley got in the way. Now he fires it through the traffic and Bo got the blocker on it. Just that side of the ice, everybody moved more to the left of Bo when they gave him the lane to see the White Cloud shot. And he showed that great save by Oscar Dansk. How about right after the penalty? Two on one. Branson's got a wicked wrister, and he let it go in a big stop by Landon Bow at the other end of the ice. Sent in from center. White Cloud, the first man on it. He goes to the goal scorer, Keegan Kolasar. White Cloud ahead. Returns the puck to Kolasar. We'll move it in deep. Kolasar and Hetherington collide along the end wall. And taken back by Hansen. Calderon outlets the puck. Phelan will fly in. Delays at the hash marks, and he finds the late man Hansen in his shot. Tipped out in front. Fought off by Dance. And the loose chain scooped up by Wagner the other way. What a nice job by Coughlin in front of the net. Askren was standing there, and the loose puck might have been available, but Coughlin tied him up. No second opportunity. Hansen, who had that chance, goes to Calderon. Been collected. And it's dumped back in by Nick Hag. Hetherington with some time. He'll lead it up ice. Phelan tried to work it across the rink. Mateau was there. Mateau celebrated his 25th birthday yesterday. And the Wolves guilty of the icing. Yeah, it's 20. Fifth birthday and number 23. I, I'd say it three glorious opportunities in uh, last night's game. Could have easily scored on all three and had a hat trick for his birthday. It did not happen though, but the Wolves won. I thought that was uh, close to not being icing. Deemed that way, so the Wolves will have to start uh, in their own zone. Offensive faceoff for the veteran Lauren. Tenth year, huh, with the Texas Stars. 12th in the American Hockey League. Hard to believe he spent his first two years pro in the Hershey Bears Washington Capitals organization in the ECHL. Mm. And Scott White recruited him to come to Austin, the general manager of the Texas Stars, now an assistant GM with Dallas. And Derek Lassell just raving about his leadership abilities. That's addition to all the points he's piled up. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. He's been spectacular in the American Hockey League and just uh, loves Austin and has been uh, a fixture there. It's nice to see that the franchise can still do that. And it could still be had the American Hockey League. You don't see it very often where you have one guy or two guys play for that long of a time and 
the fans can relate. Yeah. It's a great story. Turnover opportunity back across the line. McClure and a stop out in front. It was Mersh who took the feed. McClure fires and Dansk able to hang on. Well, good numbers and a nice little drop pass, and it just becomes a situation. Your goaltender's got to be sharp. The shot was a good one by Mersh, and uh, very nicely stopped by Oscar Dansk. And he has been on his game, and his best buddy has been spectacular, too. So feeding off each other, these two goaltenders, there's the second chance, and you can see Oscar getting up right away and concentrating and focusing on where the puck went. Nance has already stopped 13 shots here in the opening period. We're 13 minutes in. Carr has it for the Wolves. Good pressure from behind by Garyanov. Garyanov was kept out of the lineup most of the last year in the postseason because of the lack of defensive play. Derek Laxdale talking to us before the game, raving about his 200-foot game this season. So he's close. Now a centering pass. Giriana played it to the point. Hansen sends it across to Hetherington. Return to Hansen. Rister out in front. Off of Gage. Quinney to the corner. Hag got to it first. Paid the price as he was hit by Dowling, who picks up the loose puck. Dowling dropping it off for Hetherington. His shot off the glass. Skims free towards Hansen. He holds the zone. Mersh tried to go back. Picked off by Masick, who starts up ice with it. End of a shift, so he'll dump it deep. Yeah, good defense, though. You know, Wolves able to get that puck up and out, but that's a bit Wolves' best line, so that's a line you want to have them in the other end. So it's a big win for the Texas Stars if they can keep them hemmed in their own. P.J. Tynan. Here's McKenzie. He turned 28 on Friday night. Went back to the line for Reinhardt. Reinhardt walks a wrister off the backboards. Branston pinching from the point. Finds an escape route and sends it up top. Kept alive by Reinhardt. Back along the backboards. T.J. Tynan looking for Kolasar in front. He couldn't handle it. Nice moving though of the Wolves and Branstrom's abilities, even though he's down low. Kept good control of the puck. Well, we got a little offside debate here. Oh. One ruled it <laughs> offside. The other linesman waved it off. <laughs> Derek Lack still talking to that linesman, wondering why that call was made. He probably saw the fire official waving it off. And Rocky Thompson's just eh, nonchalant, just another, <laughs> another day at the office. <laughs> Let's have a look at our central divisions. The standings presented by Flood Brothers, and boy, is it ever tight. At the top, the Grand Rapids Griffins were here last night. The Wolves defeat them and move an inch closer to the Griffins. They have 20 games remaining with 70 points. You see the Wolves have 23 games remaining and 66 points. My arithmetic is right. You win those games in hand. You're in first place. Iowa, 21 games remaining and 67 points. Top three. Rockford has played very well as of late. They have 61 points. Texas, you see, with 22 games remaining with 58. So right there, along with Milwaukee and the two teams on the bottom, not very far out of it either. 61 points is fourth 55 is last, so all you need is a couple of weeks of good hockey, and you can put yourselves right back in it. So, awfully fun to see the Central Division this year, and every game is so critical. <laughs> well, that's a pretty unselfish present there, wanting to share a win. Well, his lucky shirt, and uh, he needs a lucky another shirt maybe after uh, his face and fingers get Billy, demolished. If he goes home with a white shirt, <laughs> it will be lucky. <laughs> Toughly good, too, though. At Loyola Medicine, our physicians and caregivers place the physical and emotional needs of each patient above all else. Loyola Medicine, we also treat the human spirit. Learn more at LoyolaMedicine.org. Here's Zach Leslie in his own zone. Broken up, Calderon looking to center. Gallant there defensively. Nice turn of the body to find Weiss up ice. He'll send it in, and Wagner will forecheck Bayreuther. They collide, and Weiss takes the loose puck. 
Recolax and throws it out in front. Oh. A tip by Wagner and a stop by Bo. Very nice. I mentioned this line last night early in the game how they have to bring some energy. They're going to get more ice time than normal because of the injuries and the number of games the Wolves are playing here as of late. And uh, they were terrific last night. And this is just a terrific play also by Weiss. Wagner parks himself in front. The floater through and he gets a good piece of it. And Bo down in the butterfly. We'll find that to jump into his belly and he holds on no rebound. Nick Hag will track back for the loose puck. Zach Wakebound his partner looking ahead. And here's Mateau towards Hag. Hag from center will throw it in. Hag and White Cloud on the ice. Billy, this D pairing, they're both young rookie defensemen. They're a combined plus 56 on the season. Yeah, pretty good numbers. They've been uh, solid together all year long. They've uh, grown together. They've uh, become uh, a, a, such a stable pairing. And uh, we know Nick Hague is. Just a, a wicked shot. Best defenseman in the Canadian Junior Hockey Leagues last year. Of course, out of Ontario. 35 snipes last year. Zach Whitecloud, not known so much for offense, but he's had some games where he's looked unbelievable, too, in that regard. But defensively, they have been very sound, and that's what you want from your young guys. Chris Dennis, who runs the defense, saying they're just students of the game. They work well. They're always communicating, and they're pushing each other to get better day in and day out. Well, we can actually say from the start of the season, it was an area that we were not quite sure of. It could be, uh, when you're looking at the start of the year, a, a troublesome spot. Mm -hmm. And when you watch them play early, uh, things weren't so good. But, boy, did it change. Rocky Thompson understood. If you look back uh, into, what, six weeks, they went over a lot of video in different areas which they needed to get better at. And as a group, they all did. And uh, they became such a strong defensive minded team and they've all blossomed and your oldest defenseman is what 25 Zach Leslie and Griffin Reinhardt are each 25 that's pretty good Jake Bischoff out with injury in just his second year pro another young promising defenseman in this back end for the Wolves here's Branstrom a first round pick his shut off the glass he was the first defenseman selected by Vegas. Reinhardt also a first rounder. His shot broken up. Brandstrom couldn't pull the trigger. A good challenge from behind. A stick on top of his too. Sometimes that'll be called. He couldn't release it because of that stick. Gage Quinney rotates it low. Carr couldn't get to it. Jammed up the boards. Reinhardt will keep it in. And now Hansen has some room. Garyanov gets the breakout. Dowling settles down a hopping puck. He'll delay and put it into the glove of Oscar Dance. He just had no help. Uh, Texas in the midst of a change, and there's all wolves around him, so he just fluttered one on net and an easy stop for Oscar Dance to settle it down with 325 remaining. They've doubled up the shot totals on the wolves so far, 14-7. There's Nick and his uh, amazing shot. Ten goals, pretty good. Double figures in your first year as a defenseman. And a plus 25. He is now fifth, I believe, in the plus minus yep. categories overall in the American Hockey League. Second among defensemen and rookies, trailing only his D partner, Zach Whitecloud, who is plus 31. They're out there now for the Wolves. Keegan Kolasar working in the corner. The puck comes free to Whitecloud. He'll go to the line. Tynan to Whitecloud. Back to Tynan. Claimed it off the rail. White Cloud once again holding to Hag. Hag shot was looking for the stick. A Kolasar in front. Yeah, right handed shot. He would have thought maybe Kolasar would read that and get his extend his arms with a stick into the front. That was the play that Hag was hoping for. Condra for checking on Hag. Helping out. Kamano centering pass. Nobody home. Kolasar got it to the blue. Kept alive by Gleason. Kamado to the point, didn't realize the defense was changing, and the Wolves exit the puck. Again, the communication uh, at that Where point, Bolsar got it. And smart play is to get it up and out, but he could have just dished it to Tyne, and they might have been gone on a two-on-one. Whoa. Gleason gliding in and then turning low. 
Tried to go for the reverse hit on Hag. They cancel out. Those two know each other well, both playing in the OHL against one another the last four seasons. Mm -hmm. Nick Gleason's a great story. Just a tryout to start the year in the summer. Ended up playing in the National Hockey League this year through injuries. Yeah, rookie camp invite, and he turns it into an entry level contract. Yeah. Played some games with Dallas early on when they had a number of injuries. So, again, as you mentioned, then you go from a tryout not even knowing what's going to happen or where you're going to be, and a few months later, you're playing in the National Hockey League. Pretty cool. Both the Wolves and Stars have a couple players that went undrafted that are having great rookie seasons. Mm -hmm. Leeson and Lesperance undrafted for Texas. White Cloud and Coughlin for the Wolves have been equally as good in their rookie seasons. Absolutely. There is a look at Coughlin who came out of the Western Hockey League undrafted. Talking about shots, he has a cannon also, and him and Haig both in the warm-up. Each give each other three pucks and one timers before they leave the ice. Here's the end to end rush by Gleason. A little spinorama move. Boy, uh, look like a few teammates of mine many moons ago there, Denny Savard. Yeah. Guess that's more of a Serge Savard spinorama, <laughs> right? <laughs> <Since he's> a... <laughs> Good point. Who's going to have to change his name to Savard, though? Yeah. And like you, Billy, he's got a nice Memorial Cup winning it last year with Hamilton. Oh. Yeah, the old uh, Hamilton, uh, back in my day, played in uh, Mountain Arena. Oof. Tough town. Oh, that was tough. Yeah. <laughs> Things have changed there. They had an American Hockey League team for a number of years. You know, back into the OHL. Would that have been the Hamilton Red Wings back then? Or what no, that was before me. And then they became the Finn Cups. Finn Cups, that's a great name. Brandstrom lets the puck go free to time again. Reinhardt gets it ahead. He won a Memorial Cup with Derek Laxdahl in Edmonton, did Reinhardt. Who was described as the workhorse. Yeah, he still is. Brandstrom tried to get it low, broken up, and Garyanov quickly ahead. Wolves get back as Garyanov tried to connect with Dowling in the late entry. Well, lots of interference too uh, on that play by Marsh did a good job on Branson not letting him back in the play. He came and developed into a two on one. But Toe nearly got a clean look for Masick. Instead it's Les Perrance working in. He fires and it's turned away by Dance. That's some defense by Nick Hagan. I'm not getting or le letting him get any room to move by and get a better shot off Les Perrance. Hague's got the great reach. Tall, lanky defenseman. Loose at center. Quinney lifts his stick. Carr has to go back to get onside. Masick didn't tag up, so they'll have to regroup again and plenty of time for Hetherington. He'll kill the clock. And the Wolves will take the lead to the locker room. 1-0 Chicago, our first period scoring summary is presented by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Kia dealers. Keegan Colasar has goals in back-to-back -back games, points in three in a row, his 11th of the year from Curtis McKenzie, who extends his point streak to eight games, and T.J. Tynan has helpers in back-to-back -back outings for the Wolves. one nothing Chicago when we come back. Billy Chaps with Wolves forward T.J. Tynan. Back with first period highlights are presented by Loyola Medicine. We also treat the human spirit. The Wolves early on in the uh, first period. Nice work. Down low. It's Colasar McKenzie teaming up, keeping the puck on the boards. McKenzie to Tynan. Tynan throw it back behind the net to McKenzie. What a pass he makes on the backhand. Colasar finds himself an area forehand available. McKenzie's pass right on the tape and in the back of the net for the only goal of the 20 minutes as we look at our Pepsi Zero Sugar game stats 15 8 shots in favor of Texas scoring chances 5 4 Texas face offs one better by Texas also 10 9 turnovers 4 for the Wolves 3 for the Stars hits 2 1 Texas.
You can score a ride to and from every game this season with Lyft. Get $5 off your ride with the promo code Shy Wolves. As both teams getting back on the ice. And another good crowd on hand. Game four of a five game homestand for Chicago. Off to a good start, 3 0 so far. And they've won four straight in this building. But after Tuesday's game against Rockford, Billy, the Wolves will embark on their second four game road trip in the last couple weeks. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing, though. Things are going well, and the road has been uh, awfully nice. Uh, they did lose their last two in Manitoba, but overall, still leading with the number of wins they have on the road in the Central Division. The hectic schedule it will become pretty soon too overall right into the end of the season. Here's a look at Chris Dennis to the left of head coach Rocky Thompson on your screen to the right of Rocky Thompson. Those two have worked so well together managing this young D Corp for Chicago for rookie defensemen. And not often see an Easterner and a Westerner get together like that. <laughs> <laughs> Chris from Toronto of course Rocky Western Canada. Rolls will pursue the puck. Hetherington canceled out with Tynan. Those two teammates together in Cleveland, Tynan and Hetherington. Winning a Calder Cup with the Monsters before the Cavaliers won the NBA title. Pretty cool. He prayed there. Together, those two teams won an NBA champion, won the American Hockey League champion, owned by the same company. So it had to be a blast. Yeah, they were starved for a title Ooh. in that city and then got CLR two in a matter of a week. <laughs> two for the price of one. And if it wasn't for a certain baseball team here in Chicago, they might add a World Series as well. That's true. Why is this faceoff not center ice? Is that the redirection was at center ice? There's a little bit of debate about it. Yeah, I mean the pass was out through the neutral zone. It was redirected. Is it an icing call? It hit the top of the stick of uh, one of the Wolves players and was sent all the way into the netting. At the far end, and I'm not sure what they're calling this. Terry Korharski and Jake Recky, the referees, Jonathan Sledek and Bevan Mills, the line staff. There's a look at the veteran Terry Koharski who worked last night's yeah. game here in Chicago. There's hockey families and there's officials families <laughs> and the Koharskis are certainly the official family. It's official. <laughs> now after that Les Bronx will be kicked out of the draw. Condroy place. Les Bronx take the face off against Gage Quinn and he wins it back to Hanley. Hanley has points in back to back games for Texas. Here's a shot by Condra and it climbs the glass out of play. And a quick feed to him and he had some time initially but took too long and as he went to release it, redirected up into the netting. So Quinney will get another chance with uh, Les Bronx and wins this one. Here's Griffin Reinhardt. Off the glass and out. Bayreuther will be the first man on it. Mm -hmm. Taken away by Gage Quinney. Kamano back the other way, and the first penalty call against Texas will give the Wolves their first power play of the day, hooking the call on Kamano. It looked like a steal and an opportunity, but the hook came into play. And Kamano will sit because of that. And the best thing about a power play early in a period is the fact that you're getting a nice, fresh sheet of ice. And here's the errant feet off the boards not handled cleanly. It's going to be taken by Quinney and then the hook comes in from behind draw, draws Quinney's leg back loses a stride as he's trying to move into it and uh, easy call to make. Wolves 20 and nearly a half percent on the power play ninth best in the league. Texas penalty they were one of four last night. Carr leads the team in power play points to Branstrom over to tie it. Tynan looks back to Branstrom, holds for oh. Carr, kind of bobbled away from Carr. Carr's 24 points in the man advantage, fourth best in the AHL. 
Carr penetrating to McKenzie. His shot broken up out in front. Branstrom will keep it in. Tying in a little tip pass too far to the reach of Branstrom. And one of the things uh, I think we've noticed through time here against the Texas Stars is they are on top of you. They do not give you very much time. They love to pressure. And you have to be alert and ready. They're 10th in the league on the PK are the Stars. As Tynan trying to break away from Nyberg. Ends up with Branstrom. Pressure was coming from Mersh immediately. Here's Tynan. Back to Branstrom. Given to Tynan. He'll swing into the slot down low. Masek back. Here's Carr. He scores. Daniel Carr extends his goal lead in the American Hockey League with his 29th. And he now has points in 10 in a row. That'll tie Brandon Peary. Former Wolves player now with the Las Vegas Golden Knights. Bit of a fluke here. Really nice setup. Good passing. And this it will carry him and go in favor of Daniel Carr. Curtis McKenzie, the initial pass from Masick. That is what's supposed to happen and take place. But it uh, goes off his heel. I think McKenzie strong on the puck, though, to get a piece of it. And it squirts across to Daniel Carr, who just uh, waltzes in with a six by four. Eight goals, 14 points in the 10 game point streak for Daniel Carr. McKenzie getting his second assist of the hockey game. And Brooks Masick also assisting in that power play goal at 2 12 of period number two to make it 2 0 Wolves. I think it's interesting, uh, of course, Daniel Carr's been good all year long, but uh, Curtis McKenzie's role has changed, I think, dramatically in the last couple of weeks with some of these injuries and he got out and Perry climbing uh, up to the National Hockey League and he is as you mentioned putting quite a point streak together too. And he wasn't happy with his production just a month or so ago when he talked with us but uh, starting to fire it up I guess he's getting close to playoffs. Certainly a playoff performer has Curtis McKenzie won a Calder Cup with Texas took him to another Calder Cup and here's Wong on a breakaway. He shot it too high on Landon Bow. Get some zip on that. Back the other way. It's feeling handing it off and Calderon's <laughs> attempt a circus style catch by the Oscar dance yeah, short side wrister. Pretty good shot. Looked like it might have been placed. Top shelf on that short side, but a very nice ends up being saved by Oscar Dansk. Calderon moving in. Yeah, there it is. Uh, somewhat awkward, just a bit of a jammer up into the body, but nicely done by Dansk. Keeps it 2 0. 16 11 shot advantage for the Stars, but it's the Wolves who lead 2 0. As Branstrom back behind the net has it for the Wolves. Branstrom began uh, in Sweden playing as a goaltender and worked his way up to the back end. That certainly has paid off for him. It's just smart. It's not to anything else. That is smart. Actually, that's not the truth, I don't think, anymore with the equipment. And uh, the luxury of being like the quarterback in football, you can't touch a goaltender. We were talking about this a lot yesterday. Don't say we, only you were talking about it. <laughs> I just uh, think if they want to make the game quicker and keep goalies away from playing the puck, they should be available to be hit. And you know that's not going to happen because the benches will be empty. But it's funny how goaltenders and anything's going on around them. They'd love to get the old waffle iron going, though. Yeah, you've had to deal with some fiery netminders in your time. Etherington leading it ahead. Broken up by Zach Leslie Morin. Directed it back to the blue and taken up ice by Heatherington. A long one in on Oscar Dance and he will hang on. Good friend of ours, Kurt Fraser, coached in Grand Rapids for quite some time, was with the Dallas Stars too, as assistant coach. He uh, was such a great hockey player, such a tough individual. And Billy Smith, everybody yeah. remember Billy Smith. He slashed him right across the face. Chicago Stadium broke his cheekbone. I think he got maybe a week suspension. I forget what it was, but it wasn't that much compared to what it would be today. He probably would get thrown out of the league. It was brutal. He was the first real fiery netminder oh. that I remember, Billy Smith. Were there guys before him, Billy, that 
I don't think as much. Uh, for some reason, he was the teacher. And then there was <laughs> Ronnie Hextall, et cetera, after. Yeah. Cole Sark chipping it around Hetherington. A roller in on Bo. He keeps the play moving. Hetherington. A little bit. Send it out through center and Reinhardt has to move back with Guiriana flying in on the four check. Reinhardt now battling with Mersh. Puck came free to Kulasar. He lost to blew a tire and now Branstrom will bump it back to Reinhardt. They have some good uh, passes back uh, and forth that really slow the play down. This is a good shift by Texas. They're using the body and getting on top of Branstrom and Reinhardt, but there was some nice nifty. Passes by that pair of defense slowed things down. Eventually the Wolves able to get it up and out. Dowling. Pinned up by Hag. Quinney couldn't get it past Hanley. Here's Bayworth through with some room. His shot off the backwards and it kicks into his own end. Again, there's a nice shot because it's low and there's a lot of traffic to that one side. That easily could have glanced off anything in front. And in. Les Bronze knocked down across the line by White Cloud. And the Wolves have a four on two up ice. Car delaying in finds White Cloud down the slot. He shoots. He scores. Zach White Cloud, sixth of the season, makes it three nothing Chicago. Now we were talking earlier about Zach White Cloud. Nick Cage's the guy with a shot. And he's the offensive weapon. But I mentioned that White Cloud can join the rush and be such a weapon. And he's got. A very good relation. As you can see, this is not a slapper. He picks his spot and he makes it. But this play only happens and develops because of that man, Daniel Carr. He almost forced a feed. He realized it wasn't there. He held on to it. His line mates and teammates stayed on side for him. Then he moved in on the left side, pushed the defense back, and found the late coming White Cloud for the perfect feed and beautiful shot. Spent the summer with a buddy delivering pizzas, and he makes it 3 0 Chicago, ending the afternoon for Landon Bow as Philip DeRosier will come in to replace the Texas Netminder. Played very well here just a few nights ago. And again, I, I, I'm not sure if you're going to blame the goaltender on that shot. There's no chance all along, White Cloud and uh, the Power play goal by Daniel Carr. You can't do anything about that. So this is a wake-up call to the bench and the team. Yeah, it, that's got the uh, momentum swing attempt, at least by the coach there. Always had an excellent season. I mean, the recall after a shutout in Milwaukee, spending two weeks with the Dallas Stars. He's appeared in two NHL games this year, almost up to 60 minutes now, and his goals against. It is just over one. Well, he's only that one goal in, I believe. Yeah. 18 saves and 19 shots in 58 minutes of work. Here's Mateau. The Wolves leading 3 0. White Cloud from Carr and Quinney at 438. Ends the day, at least for now, for Landon Bow. And you never know. Might be one of those situations where we have a. Witnessed before where they put the goaltender right back in after a couple of shifts, just the, the wake up call to the team. Here's Gallant mm. barreling his way in. Reinhardt shot just missed. Very poised going in it there, DeRogier with a nice blocker save. It's a pretty good area to score and get a nice quality shot on target. Well, the linesman went down back behind the play there, Bevan Mills. Appears to be all right back in the skates as Hansen ahead. Duck in the shoulder, Dowling picked up the puck and oh, dance had to hold his ground on the short side. Penalty call will go against Nick Hag. A slash out in front, maybe it's Kolasar who gets caught. It's Texas to the power play as Landon Bow is a little frustrated after giving up three to the Wolves. Bulls fans tilt studio at ringside sports has reopened to celebrate visit Chicago Wolves.com slash sweepstakes to enter to win a group outing for 20 and a Wolves game plus one hour of ice time at ringside enter today 
in the box is a valuable penalty killer, TJ Tynan. And Texas with the power play, but it's Gage Quinney with two shorties on the season coming up ice. Dowling the forward back, kick to puck three. And the last shorty was against his goaltender at that end of the ice in the second period. By Gage Quinney. Mm -hmm. Here's Carr cleaning up the boards, but not out. Gleason kept it alive. Dowling sets it back to Gleason. Gleason fakes and goes to Morin. Morin pass back through the box, off a player and out. Good angle by Quinney again, forcing Morin's pass through him and hits his skate and goes out. Last Perance swings it to the line. Gleason resets the power play. Goes to Morin. They play it deep for Condra. Condra pops it free to Dowling. Dowling drifting into the corner. Played up top for Gleason. Sends it across for Moore. Settles looking for a stick out in front. It was blocked and cleared out by Reinhardt. Well, that's what I was talking about uh, with Derek Laxdell, the coach of Texas. Reinhardt in his penalty game. Such a premier defenseman. His size, his body, the way he gets in front of shots. Fun to watch. That's dedication. It's easy to do the Flamingo. I'm used to that. <laughs> Made a living through your, your <laughs> NHL career as well, the uh, didn't have shot blockers back then. Yeah, that was well offside and waved off initially by the linesman, but caught on the second look. As Garyanov was uh, stopping, but he stopped about two feet inside the blue line. And have a nice maybe wide angle as Bay Ruther's skating in in the bottom of our screen. No, uh, there's already a man across, and you'll see there he is. <laughs> I'm caught. <laughs> we were talking in your first intermission interview with TJ Tyne, and boy, he's become such a valuable penalty killer for a guy with all those points. No, oh, exactly. And that's what's taxing sometimes with teams when you have your key guys, Daniel Carr, Gage Quinney, also guys that are on every situation you can imagine in a hockey game, power play, penalty killing, regular shift. Here's Kiriana with his speed. Coughlin caught up to him. It's just fun to have all those situations in your favor. Hot pass to Hanson. Grabs it off the wing. Will give and go with McClure. Down low. Mersh mm. tried to tuck it in on the backhand. Put it wide. Short side top shelf. Hoping that the dance was down. Hanson fanned on it. McKenzie a challenge. Two assists for McKenzie including a goal by Kolasar who comes out with the puck. Kulasar kills the remaining time, dumping it deep. The Wolves two for two on the PK and one for one on the power play. They lead three nothing. Here's McGinn cutting in. DeRosier got the shoulder on it. He didn't even flinch. Very nice play. Branstrom looking out in front from again. Wong after it. Mersh ties up with him. Some sort of yeah, I'm not sure if that was an issue. I think that's a shot blocker that we were just talking about. I think that's a strap. Yeah, off of Bayreuther's skates mm -hmm. as he goes to the bench. Wong back in for Chicago. Got it deep. Hanley steers up the boards and flying through center and across the line. Broke it up with some speed on the attack. Was called her own. Well, he did have a lot of speed. He almost uh, got through the defense. And on a shot, though, I believe. Last year, he's the senior captain at Michigan and a Hobie Baker top 10 finalist. Calderon hounding out in front with Mascarin and Dance has seen enough. He'll cover it up. Eric Branstrom doing just a, a bit too much in his own zone twice there. Trying to beat guys and both times luckily the Texas Stars players ran into themselves almost. This is the great opportunity after the penalty was over for time again. Tried to go uh, on the top shelf blocker side and mention Roger just steps down and makes himself big. I was just going to say, it'd be nice to see Ty get a going offensively, score a goal or two, help him out. To great size, good skater. The confidence builder. Yeah. Here's Brooks Masick. Wanted to go to Quinney out in front. Back the other way, Kamano. Looking for Hanley. Quinney jarred it away from the defense. Masick's the first man on it. Wolves enter on a four on three to Quinney. Back to Masick. Masick contained by Hetherington. Quinney helps out the cause. Unable to drop it down on the stick blade for Carr, but Hag will pinch from the point. Hetherington ahead and out.
Hanley forced back by McKenzie. Here's Hetherington. Morin, a little give and go. Condra couldn't pull the trigger. Broken up by Reiner. Les Perrance couldn't tuck it home. The Wolves dodged a bullet there. They really did. Oscar danced all over the map in the crease, just trying to get a piece of the puck and was uh, very good at it. We've crossed the halfway point of the hockey game. The Wolves leading 3 0. And plenty of Wolves wear available, including the 25th anniversary sweater that the Wolves are wearing this afternoon. Join us on Saturday, March 30th for Salute to Military Families Night, presented by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Kia dealers. The Wolves will host members of our armed forces and their families at, as well as a military resource fair. Visit ChicagoWolves.com slash veterans to register. Well, Billy, a seven-shot advantage for Texas, but it's the Wolves that lead 3-0. What's your assessment of the first half of this hockey game? Well, quite honestly, and this is the truth. This is what we have been seeing as of late. A few more shots against than four, but being productive and scoring on their opportunities, the Wolves, and having success. And they've, quite honestly, been uh, a team for most of the year that have held the opposition down in shots. Yeah, fourth best coming into action today, the Wolves, in shots allowed. Texas right behind fifth fewest allowed in the AHL. Start of this homestand, the Wolves had 13 shots, which included two in overtime to win a game in overtime. Uh, the start of this homestand. Here's Keegan Colesar bringing it in. That was a win over the Iowa Wild. And coming into action today in the Central Division are one point up on the Wolves. But the Wolves have two games in hand. And that shot total was lowest ever for the Wolves. Six, three, and two in three periods. But the bottom line is the last number, two to one. Two to one. <laughs> Crazy how that goes. Yeah. Max Lagasse has been the winning netminder the last three games for the Wolves. Who have been outshot 97 to 60 in those three games. Yeah, that's at home. So there you go. Doesn't mean all the shots are great shots, not to knocking Max or Oscar. They might be on the perimeter, but when we were talking with Rocky today, and that's the one thing he's pointing out is the fact that the, the chances have been a lot closer yeah. than maybe the shot totals, and chances are what the coaches are more concerned about. Exactly. Ag shot turned away by Virose came in a relief of Landon Bow this afternoon. Had a couple of tests too. He's made a couple of quality stops in the early going when he came in. Heathering to Nang. His shot blocked away by Dance. Prior to Bow coming back from Dallas, DeRose started seven straight and only gave up 13 goals in those seven games. Wong would have been offside as McGinn got trapped in trying to drag the leg. But, uh, of an interference play too, pushing McGinn in. He used to do that all the time, but now you get called for it. Zach Whitecloud back behind the net to Brooks Masick. B pass to Carr. Carr, another two point game for him trying to work down low. Pick back up and cleared out. 22 multi point games now this season for Daniel Carr. That block uh, by Branstrom avoided maybe a goal. That was a pretty good play by Branstrom who had uh, Oscar Dance spreading his legs. Nyberg's attempt off the traffic. Picked up in the slot area eventually by Leslie to get it out. Here's Carr. Oop. Picked it back up, tried to set it for Leslie up on the rush. Gage Quinney, a mm -hmm. challenge and souvenir uh, over the glass. And just going back to that shot, Ransom got a piece of it and uh, looked like it was going right through the wickets. Uh, dance, but it ended up being a nice block. There is uh, 22 multiple points out of the 48 games he has played. So that's. Great numbers for Daniel Carr, so consistent. 
Six games with Vegas this season. Scored his one goal in a game at the United Center here in Chicago over the Blackhawks. So he loves scoring in the city of Chicago this season, <laughs> Daniel Carr. Last year, 38 games with Montreal. Yeah, it's interesting. They, uh, what we see every day, his abilities. I think that uh, Montreal would have kept him. Played 94 of his 100 NHL games with the Canadians. Here's a takeaway by the Wolves. Reinhardt to Coughlin. Rister threw oh. a tip by Kolasar looking for two, and DeRosier kept it out. I thought he had it planted under his glove, but somehow Kolasar were able to peel it out of there and get a second chance. His face off win. Wolves able to get a puck eventually to the net. Time again, swinging up ice. Curtis McKenzie back to him again. Tynan's going to be the first man on the puck. He goes to White Cloud. White Cloud put it into the glove of DeRosier. I like that play by White Cloud because of the hopping puck. He was able to keep it alive with his hand. That's a smart play. You play with your stick and it's jumping around. If you whiff on it, you're flat footed. Well, he went down like a shortstop might. Kept the play alive for himself and on net with a shot. Do you have a favorite shortstop? Uh, boy, let me think about it. Now you think about it while I tell you what you can get this week at Jewel. Look for ads to find specials on Gledmark, Hefty, Hershey's, Screaming Sicilian Pizza Company, and Urban Pie Pizza Company. They're all on sale through February 26th. Maybe purchase one of these items, bring your receipt to the All State Arena box office and receive a special offer. I'm just trying to think of the. Uh Tandem with the Blue Jays back in their heyday. Damasco Garcia was second. I think uh, Fredo Griffin maybe a shortstop. Tony Fernandez. Yeah. I'm getting old. Well, here's some youngsters in attendance enjoying this. One of many family Sundays at Allstate Arena this season. Every Sunday, home game. The first 1,000 kids through the doors here at Allstate Arena receive a free gift card. Today's gift card, a 60-minute gameplay card from mm. GameWorks. Very nice. We just uh, spent some time there in January with all the players and the season ticket holders. What a fun place that is. Game works. Yes. Good hand, uh, crowd on hand again this afternoon. Lots of games here at Allstate this week. Yeah, nearly 11,000 last night. They had 15,000 Thursday morning against Texas. Here's Reinhardt fought off by DeRosier. Hansen playing it towards Hetherington. Mersch covers the ground and gives it back to Hetherington. Run into by Wong. Mateau crashing into Hansen. Stars paid the price as they break out, taking the hits to make the plays. Mersch into the offensive zone. Had Geary on a streak into the net, kicked away by Dance. The follow-up drive by Hetherington. Excellent save it ended up being, and then this one right on target. And takes the whistle to settle things down like a goaltender should. But the Wolves doing a good job, too, offensively. I like taking the body. You want to give them a reason to quit after this long road trip that they've been on, and they know they're going home tonight, so you... Keep the pedal to the metal, keep the body going, peck away. Limit their chances if possible. 24 shots, so for the Texas Stars. And still lots of game to go, 25 plus minutes, but it's indicative, I think, uh, of what their coach, Derek Laxdell, said to us. They just have, they're having trouble scoring. Averaging a little over three goals a game, 19th in the AHL, and yielding just under three. Wolves, Gage Quinney, strong on the puck, got it out. We're turning right back in. Lesperance, undrafted out of Michigan Tech. Knocked down by Nick Hag. And here's Quinney trying to work through the neutral zone, connecting with Masick quickly to Carr. Carr on his backhand, put it towards the net, kicked on goal by Masick. That 
probably would have been ruled a distinct kicking motion. You think so? <laughs> I don't think it was distinct. I think it was redirecting it, which you can do also. You don't kick it. You can actually frame your boot up against the puck to make it a flexion. You just can't kick it. And it was a little slower floater, but uh, still off the blade and on target. There's a butternut bread sweater. Yes. So the Wolves got out shot by seven in period number one out shooting Texas here in the second 12 nine and they win the face off in a Coglin attempt locked out in front and the counter attack developing now with McClure who blocked it. McClure coming up from the ECHL and he's having a nice season with Idaho Dowling to the point and Lee will give it back to McClure. McClure leaving it off for Bayreuther. Bayreuther checked, but he gets the puck to Hanley. Off the traffic in front. McClure couldn't tuck it home. Picking up the defense late was Coglin. Leslie also there on his man, Kamano. I think it may have grazed off the back of him. Bayreuther got it to Kamano. Steered to Dowling at the line in the backhand. He'll scoop it down low. Bayreuther wheeled to the ice by Kolasar. Lead pass, Tynan connecting with McKenzie. McKenzie's shot was blocked by Hanley. Hanley signing a two-year contract extension with Dallas. Earlier in the week, has it behind his own net. Ahead for McClure. Ransom picks up for Chicago. And he leads it to Weiss. Hanson, the first man on it. Glant flying into him. Calderon looking rink wide to Hanson. Dumping it in. Not enough for an icing. Reinhardt pinning up his man. The puck is free. Maskerin tried to feed the point. Wagner taking it the other way, and he'll send it deep. Good play. Let's get it in deep. Get your changes. Maskerin. Has Calderon put him in stride. Has a step to the backhand. A poke check by Dance, but a penalty against the Wolves. Perfect feet across and in full flight, picking up that puck. A couple of speedsters <laughs> uh, on the outside. You just can't give them that room. You have to respect it. And hack right around the hand area by Hag, and he'll sit uh, with 3:08 remaining here in the second frame. And, this is the time if Texas is going to get back into it. There it is across the arm and hands. Askren, I believe, with a great pass. And yep. A couple times now we've seen Calderon on the outside. Turn it up a notch and drive to the net with that extra speed and gear. So Hag in the box, third power play for Texas. They have three shots on two attempts, 0 for 2 on the afternoon. Warren to take the draw against Gage Quinney. When he plays it to Juan the backboards. Reinhardt pinned up by Les Perrance. Les Perrance has 11 power play goals this season, second most among rookies, fourth best in the AHL, and the Wolves will clear it from there. Rosier to Gleason. Les Perrance connecting with Gleason. In drift shoots and that must have grazed White Cloud and went wide. Went up high, awfully quick, and just over the bar it looked like. Dowling hustling. Last Perrant's pressured. Gets it low. Eric Condra around the world with it. Will drop it off for Gleason. Gleason's wrister blocked out in front, cleared by Reinhard. And again, it is the human pin cushion or puck cushion, I guess you could say. Reinhardt facing the puck, able to stop it and get it down. Especially in the second period, it's good to see a guy sacrifice like that and have the ability to get it down so you get a line change in. Much more difficult on the PK when you're in the second period. Mirianos pass picked off by Tynan. Good timing. Just turns stick over into his left hand. He's a right-handed shot and extended it to get a piece of the puck at the last second. Bayreuther 
to Hanson. Dump back in with 25 to go on the Texas power play. Dance plays it himself off the glass. A pretty good keep in by Hanson. Giriana serves it up for Bayreuther. Returns it to Giriana. Across the box. Hanson grabs it off the boards. Bayreuther. Looking back, and a one-timer kicked away by Dansk off the stick of Hansen. Wolves back at full strength as Bayreuther goes to Garyanov. It is blocked by Dansk. Oh. First on the rebound. A block by the Wolves defense. Hagen. The other way, it's Hagen. Mm. Had McKenzie driving, but Garyanov was back checking. And stick over top of... McKenzie stick, so unable to reach and get a piece of that puck, but what a stop in the beam by Oscar Dance. The rebound looked like an empty netter, but Coglin playing some goal. It's a huge block. He grew up shooting 500 pucks a day in his backyard. I didn't realize he was good at blocking shots, too. <laughs> <laughs> Send all the way down, but no icing. Calderon showcasing that speed once again. To play with it's a 50 50 for a goaltender, maybe come out and play that himself. All their own up top. McGinn comes away with it. A little foot play. Tried to glove, get gloved down by Kolasar. Now forces a turnover, and Wong will pick it up to Kolasar. He shoots short side. It will not go. But the Wolves will take a 3 0 lead into the locker room after two. Some pressure near the end. Obviously, a power player going to get more opportunities. Good stop there by Oscar Dance. A rebound squirts loose on the backhand. A couple of guys playing net, but it is Coglin on the top of the crease. Number 15 makes an excellent block. Otherwise, Mersch has himself a goal. Bay Ruther earlier. Nice play across. Easy one timer. And these pads are so simple, or not the pads, the saves are so simple today because of those pads getting square to the ice. A lot of times those pucks would creep through back in the day when they were made of. All sorts of stuff. <laughs> a lot of leather and deer hair. Yeah, now they're just so square. Down to the ice perfectly. The second period scoring summary is brought to you by the Illinois Lottery with jackpots like the Mega Millions and Powerball. How would you spend all that time? The Wolves spent their time in the second building on their 1-0 lead. Daniel Carr gets his league leading 29th of the season from Curtis McKenzie, who has two apples today, and Brooks Masick. Zach Whitecloud would make it 3 0 Chicago and end the afternoon for Landon Bow with his sixth of the season. Carr, his second point, and the other assist going to Gage Quinney. 3 0 Wolves after two. When we come back, we'll take a look back to 2006 when the Wolves entered the Hockey Hall of Fame for a little visit. We check into the Wolves vault. Chicago Wolves Hockey is brought to you by Pepsi Zero Sugar, Zero Sugar, Max Pepsi Taste, Loyola Medicine, we also treat the human spirit, Illinois Bone and Joint Institute, move better, live better, Carlucci Rosemont, an authentic Tuscan experience, Pace Bus, offering express rides to and from every home game, the village of Rosemont, it's all here. Just underway in period number three. Texas attacking with Calderon. Put it to the side of the net and protecting was Dansk on the short side. They gotta be aware. Small plays around the posts. A turnover has Hansen heading in. Broken up by the pair of defensemen out there for the Wolves. Reinhardt and Brandstrom. Tyler Wong out to center. Lead pass for Dowling. Broken up by Reinhardt and steered back the other way. Hetherington run into by Wong. Hetherington protects with the loose puck. Gobbled up by Kolasar looking for two. That hit Hanley out in front and went wide. Boy, lots of time there. Great opportunity right in the deep slot. 27th time the Wolves have taken the lead into the third period. 21st time Texas has trailed. Here's White Cloud. Over to Hag. Mm. Hag will send it back in as his mates have to tag up. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that, though. Uh, we'd like to have kept the play alive offensively, but since it went off the heel of a stick and out, that's a good play to send it back in, even though your guys have to come out. You don't want to get caught.
flat-footed right there. Oscar Dance makes his 29th stop of the day. 20 for the Wolves. Who forced a goalie change early in the second period with the White Cloud goal making it 3 0 Chicago. Rosier stopping all eight shots he's faced in relief. A roller in on Dance. He'll cover it up. Let's have a look at our second period. Highlights are presented by Loyola Medicine. We also treat the human spirit. The Wolves with some great puck movement get a break off McKenzie's stick, but it goes right to Carr that was on the power play with an empty net. And then this great shot by Zach Whitecloud moving in. Daniel Carr finding him late. And of course, Landon Bow leaves the game after that goal. Was replaced by DeRogier, who's played very well, made some good stops, played well against the Wolves. Midweek two. Bo stopping nine of twelve today. Masick lifts the stick of Maskerin. A keep in by Nyberg. His attempt out in front. And all Les Bronze nearly put that one home fancy between the legs. He didn't have many more options. He had to get his uh, stick between his legs to try to find the puck. Broken up out in front. Has a good chance again for Maskerin. Nyberg getting it deep. Carr and Quinney trying to take it back for the Wolves. Sell it down. That's exactly what you need to do. Show some poise. Hold on to it for a split second longer. Don't panic. Tenacious is Masick slipping in. Quinney tried to go to Gallant and a good lay down block by Nyberg. Absolutely. That gets across. It's an excellent opportunity, but I think 22 should have shot. Coglin told the skate, and he does. Banking it in towards Gallant, who will be the first man on it. Hansen squeezes him off the puck. Recollected by Wagner. DeRose out of his net will swing it up the far side and out. Attacking is Wagner. His shot blocked by Hansen. Turning the other way, McClure. A long one in on Dance. Put it into the restricted area where Leslie's the first one on it. Hargrove trying to hold the zone. Instead, it's Weiss moving it ahead. Mateau couldn't collect the pass and split the defense. McClure clears. Good hustle by Weiss, though, to catch that puck. He put it in. He tried to make a soft dish to Mateau, but ended up catching it up to it himself. Lead pass for Dowling. Didn't stay on side. It was a long bomb. <laughs> yes. That was the old flea flicker. So we are through 40 minutes plus now. In fact, around 44 minutes. Time to take a look at our Pepsi Zero Sugar Game stats. This is through 40 minutes of play. The Stars have 27 shots or did have. 20 to the Wolves. Scoring chances 11 9, 2 better by uh, Texas. Faceoffs 21 17, Texas. Turnovers one more by Texas. And the hits one more there. In, the same ca in that category, and hits 4 to 3. So stats all pretty close. But the Wolves with a 3 0 lead. Dallas winning in Chicago earlier today, but they lose Matt Zuccarella just acquired. He had a goal and assist in the debut, and they're expecting to be out for four weeks. <laughs> so interested to see all the stars on the ice here in the third period, including Joel Esperance, who was just up with the big club for the last couple weeks. Yeah. That's a huge blow. Yes. Coming up a couple of draft picks. Here's a chance mm. for McKenzie, a pair of assists, and he wanted to rip one home against his former team. It was time again with the dish, a soft one, perfectly placed, and just slow to react, really. It was uh, in slow motion. Hanley does a nice job of coming across, getting a stick on the attempt by McKenzie. Ernest McKenzie matching that career high with two points day for his point streak. What have you noticed with him and Tynan and Kolasar? Tynan was talking about this line kind of coming together in the last few weeks. Opportunities. I mean, you've got a very crafty, soft handed centerman that finds areas and is so good at visualizing in the offensive zone. And if you're a player that has any qualities, like the two wingers on the line, you put yourselves in areas to be available. And Tynan's going to find you. 
Tynan might be small in stature, but he's got some bite to his sure. game. And we were joking with him today that he's no longer the toughest guy in his line. <laughs> <laughs> well, those two guys do fight so hard to get into areas, and they win all those battles down low. But then they put themselves into you know, Thank you. that front presence and et cetera, and uh, fight for those pucks that usually Tynan is able to get to and throw them out in front. The one thing about their play in front of them, it's so strong that Tynan finds a defenseman, too. And that opens up and gives room for pucks to get through to areas where you can win a puck battle and get a shot or two on net. Five minutes here gone by in the third period. Four one shot advantage for Texas that trails by three as they try to get back into this hockey game. Morin will bring it in. Off of Hanley. Aruth they're trying to keep. He does, but the puck is located by Carr. Still stays in and Hook a two. hooking penalty. All that play. The Wolves should have had the puck up three times there, and now they're going to take a penalty. Bayruth, their extra attacker on for Texas, and the delayed call. Bayruth, they're steering it free to Dowie. Six on five. Condra couldn't get to the puck. It's touched up by Leslie, and the whistle sounds. Join us on Saturday, March 30th, for Salute to Military Families Night, presented by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana Kia dealers. The Wolves will host members of our armed forces and their families in a military resource fair. Visit chicagowolves.com slash veterans to register. It's Daniel Carr. He'll sit in a, a big penalty killer. Only his fifth minor of the campaign this year is 10th minute. As I mentioned, the Wolves were in that area right around their bench and blue line. Could have had the puck out a couple of times. Did not. The turnover cost them because of the hook. And now we'll have to defend on the PK. Mateau will get the penalty kill off to a good start, clearing it all the way down. As mentioned, Texas, the second best power play in the American Hockey League. If you combine the power play and penalty kill numbers for the Stars, they're at 106% on the season. Derek Laxdell saying they've been relying on their special teams lately. Here's Les Brunt cutting in, he scores! <laughs> Just like that, Les Brunt nets his 12th power play goal, and that breaks up Oscar Dance shutout bid. Now just his ability to get into areas, too. you, you got to be aware of that on the defensive side. It's a beautiful feed to him, and he's so strong to the net. And Boy, does he roof this on the backhand. Just a beautiful placed shot. Dowling will start it off and drop it off. Leasing up the ice with a nice feed and then Condor with a perfect feed through the defense. Quick little move from backhand, forehand to backhand, and then top shelf. And it's just a bad penalty to take with no need to have that situation occur. Puck should have been out and out of harm's way. We'll take the minor and now only trail, or pardon me, only lead by two in a tighter game. Last Perrance, 28th goal of the season, one behind Daniel Carr, who scored today. The 29 tallies leads the AHL in an offside. So we've got ourselves a hockey game as Texas is cut into the deficit. It's 3 1 Chicago. Pet Supplies Plus Chicago's neighborhood pet, pet store is a proud sponsor of your Chicago Wolves. Follow Pet Supply Plus on social media at Pet Supply Plus today. So a different feel now, some life after 40 minutes and no goals. Not a lot of uh, push, but a quick goal on the power play. And plenty of time remaining, 13 and a half minutes, gives Texas some life. Joel Esperance missed five games on recall with Dallas. He now has goals in six of his last seven AHL games, including this afternoon. And there's one behind Carr for the AHL lead in goal scoring. What a find by Scott White out of Michigan Tech. Scott White, the assistant GM in Dallas, GM of this team, went to Michigan Tech. And I guess you know uh, when you're conversing with your fellow alumni who the hot player is undrafted coming out of that sure. fine institution in northern Michigan. Played also in the East Coast Hockey League, too. He's really stepped up his play. It's amazing how guys can blossom maybe a few years later than others. And again, I'm not for the league and the veteran issues because you just never know how old a guy is. Look at Brandon Perry at 27, 28 now, getting an opportunity to play in the National Hockey League. 
Here's Weiss moving in. Most of his teammates have gone for the line change. He'll roll it low. And the fresh four checkers, Keegan Kolasar, Hetherington got the puck up the rail. McKenzie tried to take it back, and the goal scorer, Les Brant, will send Garyanov across the line. He stops, hits the late man. Hetherington in, dance a stop. Weird attempt, knocked down, and a quick release by Maskerin was blocked by the Wolves. That's actually, I think, uh, Les Brant had blocked it in front of the net. And Kolasar put awkwardly in the boards by Hansen. The Wolves, one of one on the man advantage, will get their second attempt of the day. Keegan seems to be okay. And this is when you need to reply. Les Brons with the backhander. Gary Onif is very quick, too. Nice little cut back, and he finds the trailer. And the shot, good stop there by Dance. The rebound will come back to the point, and then another shot that. I think it's Les Brons. And then the puck went the other way, and then Kolasar down to the ice. So a good chance here for the Wolves to regain the three goal lead they once had to start this period. Wolves getting a power play goal from Carr. He's out there now for the Wolves. Along with Tynan, Masick, McKenzie, and Branstrom, the lone defenseman, has the puck, gives it back to Tynan. Branstrom holds. Over to Curtis McKenzie. McKenzie looks up top for Branstrom. Tynan drifting deep. Back to Branstrom. One timer blocked by Dowling out in front. Hanley tried to eat it in the corner. Wolves dig it free. Branstrom keeps quickly to Carr. Carr shifting low. Tried to pop it back. Dowling in the way once again. And shorthanded, he'll come the other way. Excellent stick by Dowling, taking away good control of the puck. Interesting push off of the puck there by Danced with Honda right on the doorstep. Good! Tynan moves it in for Masick. Lift the line, stick of the police. Penalty call coming up here. Mm -hmm. It's going to go against touches. the Wolves. Yeah. Not against the wall. Oh, it isn't. That's oh. the goal to Bose at the bench. Yeah. <laughs> they shut it down. <laughs> a, how that did not get whistled dead is, is beyond me. That and that's exactly mistake. what Landon Bo is saying. That's a huge mistake. I mean, that is terrible. Goaltender was at the bench and then recognized when Oscar Dance played it that it was not going to be against the Wolves. And my apologies, I said uh, Bo, it's DeRosier hitting yeah, the goal. Bo was bowed out. <laughs> but that's a, a not sure why that's a gaff. They had the puck and sent it down the ice. The infraction already incurred. So this should be a five on three for the Wolves. Yeah. And it'll be a 44 second five on three as Nyberg gets the hooking call. Well, fooled me. I thought King or uh, TJ Tynan in the corner felt it was going against him initially. Well, we got a couple of shots, so let's see if we can find it. Nyberg is number eight. Was it? Uh, there's the slash hack over on Tynan. Hooking's a call, not much of a call, but when they get control in the corner that and send it down, that should have been an automatic whistle. They got control of the puck after the infraction and sent it down the ice. That is why we actually thought. It was going against the Wolves, and then DeRozier does the right thing. He gets off the ice as quickly as possible. All of a sudden, Dansk has it, and he has to <laughs> waddle back to his net. Yeah. So Rocky Thompson will take his time out here. His team is 4 of 15 on 5 on 3 power plays this season. A chance to restore a 3 goal lead here. Well, absolutely. Plenty of time, and the caliber of player, you would hope you'd get a Great look and regain the three goal lead. Strong on this dot. Everybody involved here, make sure no matter where it goes, have two men on it. Carr, McKenzie, Macy, Brandstrom, and Coglin out there for the Wolves in this five on three. Morin to take the draw, and Carr wins it. Coglin to Brandstrom. Deep for. Car now up top. Here's Coughlin. Oh. He shoots. He scores. Powder River for Dylan Coughlin. 
And that's why you shoot 500 pucks a day as a kid growing up in BC. That is a beautiful shot. How do you stop that? I mean, you just can't. You're watching the play and you try to get back and square up, but that is already by a top shelf short side. Masick Carr with his third point, and this is just a Hummer topper. Good uh, net presence by McKenzie in front, but you know what? When you got a guy that shoots it like that, get out of the way, let him fire. Maybe a partial screen with the forward. Is it Warren moving out? It is. And we talked about uh, Haig. And Codlin in the warm-up, the, th the two of them get three pucks each, and they sit on the dots, and they just pound them home before they go off the ice in the warm-up. And that's what we see a lot of, just like that. So the Wolves, now two of two on the power play. They continue in a five-on-four here, leading 4-1. Dylan Coughlin, Billy, becomes the 10th Wolves player to hit double digits. That's the most of any team in the American Hockey League. The Wolves and Charlotte heading into action today each had nine players with double digit goals that had all scored double digit goals with the same team. Yes. There's a exactly. couple other teams that have made some trades and right. have double digit goal scorers. Right. To get them to the total of nine. Coughlin, his tenth from Carr and Masick. So Daniel Carr, a three point afternoon. And Masick, a pair of points today. Oh, heads up. Mm -hmm. Reed Duke out of the lineup has seven goals. So the Wolves certainly could add. Brandstrom's got seven. There's a couple of guys that can get to ten in double figures. So the Wolves now five of 16 on five on threes. As they connect on the Coughlin goal. They still have 75 seconds to work with here. On a five on four, two of two. On the power play. I mentioned the aggressiveness too of Texas and be careful I and mean, be smart with a puck. You want to score another goal here, but they will challenge you and they'll take a chance trying to get a rush the other way. Brandstrom. Here's Masick. Tynan holds now. Tynan deep. Here's Carr to the forehand looking for four and DeRosier able to hang on. Nifty little move in tight. Not a lot of room. Really, the only option is probably top shelf on that short side because goalies go down. Most of them do. And Carr tried to do that, but uh, DeRozier up against the post is able to stop it and hold on and get a whistle. With 48 seconds remaining in the minor to Nyberg. With plenty of time. Second unit with a chance now. Carr gets a breather. 69 points on the season. To lead the American Hockey League. And he also now shares the AHL lead in assists with the two helpers today. He is caught up to Jeremy Bracco with the Toronto Marlies, who also has 40. Hmm. Boy, the Marlies have been dominant the last few seasons, huh? They sure have, and they did not have a very good start at all this year. They were well below 500, but have come on strong like a few teams have. Uh, we were talking about this last night. There's a couple of streaks that are incredible this year going on right now. Bakersfield has won 16 straight games. The Marlies are the defending Calder Cup champions. Hershey started the year terrible. Mm -hmm. They've now got 16 and a shootout loss in their last 17, moving all the way up to third in the Atlantic Division. And when they came through the Midwest Division on a road trip, uh, they were struggling. Yeah. I, it's hard to believe a team can win 16 straight today. Well, the parity in the in the league, any league, yeah. 16 straight. That's incredible. They lost to uh, Josh Curry, who was recalled by Edmonton, scored in his debut hockey <laughs> night in Canada. No big deal. <laughs> oh. Here's a chance, and DeRosier able to keep it out. He's only given up one in relief this afternoon. Right off the draw. Wong is a right handed shot and I believe he tried to force this puck over. Actually going the other way but he gets a favorable bounce I think off the official the linesman and it bounces through and Weiss on the doorstep. Nice to see. These guys get rewarded with some ice time and a chance on the power play too. Zach Leslie has it and the power play over so. The Wolves started the day two for two. They're now two of three, but they get that all important five on three goal from Coglin to restore the three goal lead. Yeah. Weiss knocks it down. 
deep for Wong. Condra tried to get it ahead. Bayreuther connecting with Eric Condra. Dropping it off. Calderon's attempt off of Leslie. Good pass back out in front. But Condra couldn't get it to connect cleanly. Mateau charging in. Checked off the puck. A step up by Gleason. He was off balance, off stride. Back in his haunches and easily put to the ice. But a couple of nifty moves he made from his own zone all the way up the ice. Dowling dumping it deep. Wagner lost it. But right to Tynan. Tynan with Gallant. And now Branstrom joining. Back to Tynan. Tynan swings it out in front. And it went right past Gallant. And Wagner there too. A left-handed shot just past the goal line with his body. Rister off the backboards. Eric Branstrom will get it again. Here's Galan out in front, and it skirts off of Wagner and wide. Pretty plays, good hustle the puck. Some nice passing by Branstrom and Tynan. That goal, the fourth goal for the Wolves on the power play. Obviously took some wind out of the sails and not quite the same feel. There was some pushback by Texas. He looked pretty good in the early going. Here's Masick. A one-hand attempt and DeRose kept it away. It's just glued to the boards. Been a lot of mechanics around that car. <laughs> At the point, watch lines, and it's caught by DeRosier. It's amazing how they come up with a puck still. Wolves leading 4-1. You're watching the 25th anniversary season of Chicago Wolves hockey. <laughs> That's a mouthful of skates. <laughs> Not sure who's winning that va battle. Another Sunday fun day. And it's always fun when you are winning, and this looks like it'll end up being the fourth straight win here for the Wolves on home ice on this five game homestand. Coglin on the ice with Zach Leslie. Coglin's five on three power play goal. He joins Nick Hag, double digit goal scorers on the back end for the Wolves. Zach Leslie looking low, put it to his forehand, couldn't pull the trigger as the Texas defense encircled the Wolves puck carrier. A sweet move he made on the pull and drag trying to get around, and Zach was putting himself in a nice area. Had a couple of options, but wanted to get a good shot on target. I would call that move slickery. <laughs> Moved it out to center. Was it not blockered off of? It was Oscar Dansk. And that's what Terry Goharski is saying. <laughs> look at it. Look at uh, oh Terry Goharski with his blocker movements. It, 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 why is it out here? What is going on here? It's Sunday afternoon. It's fun day. <laughs> Poor Terry's like, am I the only one that saw it go off the goalie's blocker and out of play? That's unbelievable. Unless it's offside, I didn't see that. <laughs> Terry stopped in front of the Wolves bench getting some sympathy there. <laughs> and now it's moved into the bench out of play. Soft will come back into the zone of there's the goaltender DeRoji talking to the other official. That why is it that face off in there? They're goalie block look at his side. <laughs> goalie blocking it into the it's the truth. How could four guys not really see that? That's hilarious. When was the last time we had this much blocker talk? <laughs> See the shot advantage for nine in favoring the Stars, but it's the Wolves that lead by three. Here's, here's six minutes remaining in the third period. Wolves trying to win their third in a row on Texas, and a penalty call is going to go against Masker and the Wolves. 
Two of three on the power play will get their fourth attempt. And Gage Clooney pulled back as he collected the puck. Desperation move by Maskerin trying to hold him up. Maskerin, one of those odd players, Billy. He was drafted twice. First by Florida, never signed, and then picked up by Dallas two mm. years later. Uh -huh. Yeah, there it is. I guess it's a good thing depending on how you play in that span of time in between. I have to think he lost out on some money in the signing bonus, though a second round pick sure. dropping to the fourth round. Well, you really have to have a, a long thought about that. I mean, if your agent's telling you that and you end up not uh, improving on your stature, that's not a good thing. A little false start on yeah. the face off. They'll drop it again between Dowling and Carr. A lot of face-offs lately for Daniel Carr, the winger, on power play attempts for Chicago. Cinnamon Gage Quinney is not on this unit. He's on the next unit. T.J. Tynan is with his group. So Tynan takes them on the other side. He's a right-handed shot. Daniel Carr left-handed. Strong suits right here. And Bulls get some help. That's all his effort there, though. Huh? Diving across to keep it alive. Curtis McKenzie banks it back to Brandstrup. Bulls walking the blue. Here's Carr sending it deep. Backdoor play from McKenzie. Just missed Masek. So quick. Just not ready for it. One timer by Carr. Screamed it off the glass. Kept alive by Tynan. Today is the 11th time the Wolves have scored multiple power play goals in the same oh. game. Carr nearly made it three on the man advantage as he ripped it off the short side post. There has to be a dent in that post. What a cannon we've seen from that side of the ice in this period. First by Coglin and that attempt by Carr. Carr penetrates. Goes to Kolasar. Kolasar opened up the scoring today. Over to McKenzie. McKenzie delays. Picked back up by Carr. Branson returning it to Carr. Looking at Branson again. Got the pass through. Over to Tynan. McKenzie's camped out at the crease. Drifts towards the goal line. And now Carr will serve up another one-timer, and DeRozier is there. Not this time, he's saying. <laughs> well, you know, on the other side of the ice, and we've talked enough about T.J. Tynan today, he's the passer, so when he gets it, he's not looking to shoot as much as Daniel Carr. Carr's getting himself in a position on that side of the ice, as we see, to just hammer it. It's the last attempt, but just prior to that, Off the crossbar. Fresh troops on the power play. 48 seconds to work with. Now the good thing about these two power plays where it ends up being three is the fact that it is later in the game and it's just taking more time off the clock too. For even strength and attempts against. Should be able to hold on to the puck and waste some time if needed. Hey, looking low. And it Karen back into the neutral zone. Coughlin scoring his 10th today on the power play, has it? The time again. Coughlin trying to hold the zone, forced out by a tenacious effort from Mersch. Oscar Dance will leave it off for Coughlin. Gage Quinney sending McGinn behind the Texas net as the Stars come to full strength. Hag fires it, a rebound off of DeRozier. Rolls 2 of 4 on the power play. Texas 1 of 4 on the man advantage this afternoon. So the big difference, the even strength goals by Chicago. And an offside mm -hmm. on Texas with 333 remaining in the third. Oscar Vance to the bench for a rest. It's time now as we look at Oscar Dance heading towards his teammates for our savers save of the game. Niska is a sequence of plays against Oscar Dance in the first period. Look at this action. Look at him moving around in this last save. Phenomenal. Watch his blocker as he's down. Boom. He punches this puck at a harm's way. 
This is going top shelf, even though it's not hammered, but it is going in. And Dansk all over the map. Throws that waffle iron up. And that's a lot of syrup. Well, I think it's only fitting on Oscar night that Dansk would shine today <laughs> with 35 <laughs> saves. Uh, who's hosting? It's to be determined, or perhaps nobody. Yeah. Maybe it'll end on time then. Well, like uh, Max Legacy lately, Billy, Dansk has thrived this season with more pucks to the net. He is 7 0 2 when facing 30 plus shots this season. Mm. So, a lot of action, yeah. It's good to see both goalies playing well during this five game homestand for Chicago. Of course, Max spent first few seasons pro with the Texas Stars and got the win against his former team Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. Max was very good last night, too, in a huge game. Oscar comes back with a dandy here himself, so absolutely pushing each other. And, you know, during a stretch when you have some injuries and you're not as strong as you might normally be, you need your goalies to come up big, and boy, they've been the story. Nybert to Gleason. It's up and then it's into the stands. <laughs> It's into the bench. A couple of haircuts. Yeah, he's Chris, Chris Dennis who works the uh, Wolves defense. He was quick to get out of the way. <laughs> Not a shot blocker, I guess. No. Lots of chuckles, though. And once in a while, we see situations that you don't want to see with coaches. But <laughs> overall, quite honestly, it's hard to believe not more of the coaches in hockey get hit. Well, hello, Pierre Maguire the yeah. other day. Jeez, that was scary. Oh, I think somebody was aiming at him. That went right by him, though. It was uh, very scary. That was coming with some velocity. Camano picking up the defense is White Cloud. Morin and Weiss join the scrum. Reinhardt up the board. Long one hands it out. Good second effort. Tried to chip it initially, was tied up, and then the backhand one hand out into the neutral zone. White Cloud with Kamano pursuing. Bumps it towards Mateau. He's able to make his way into the neutral zone. Condor checked him off the puck. Asik got it as far as the Texas line. Looks like the Stars will remain three points back of Rockford, who lost today mm -hmm. with two games in hand as they return home. Against Milwaukee on Wednesday, then the Wolves will be in Austin for a oh. pair of games this weekend. Kind of didn't realize all he needed to do was chip that to past the defender, and there was a two on O for the Wolves. Yeah, it'll be interesting because the Wolves go there back to back, as you mentioned, next Friday and Saturday, so there'll be huge games for both teams again. Tough angle shot. Boy. And Dance makes the save on Bayreuther. Good eye there by Bader. There had to be some room, but just off the shoulder. A block by Brandstrom out in front. Put it off the stick of Carr. Hanley, a reverse to Bayreuther. Dowling will chip it low. The Wolves will wrap up their five game homestand on Tuesday before embarking on a four game road trip to against Texas, San Antonio, and then they end it in Milwaukee. McClure to Mersh would have been offside. Dowling had a stick slashed out of his hands, picks it back up, and Kolasar is going to serve two minutes. A fifth power play for the Stars with 53 seconds remaining, and they need three goals. DeRozzi was checking in with the bench to see if they wanted to go six on four. The indication is no. Keegan trying to say he went underneath with his check. Let's see. He actually does come underneath and takes the stick right out of his hands. Is this a penalty? Is that a penalty? I don't think it is. He's coming underneath. He's lifting his stick. He didn't have good control of his stick, obviously. I think that's a pretty good play by Cole. So I could see, I didn't see that initially, but I saw his indication when he was told he's getting the penalty that he, he lifted his stick a couple times and he did come underneath. But I think if you slash the stick out of a guy's hand, uh, it's on top, underneath. That's He's lifting his stick up. You would check like that on any situation. That's what you're supposed to do. 
I don't think it's a very good call. Lesperance, who has the power play goal, trying to drop it off. Gage Quinney. Lesperance goes to Condra. Back to Lesperance. He scores his second of the game. And he's now tied with Daniel Carr as they each have 29 goals on the season. Well, again, I don't think it's the right call, a very good call. Quite honestly, if you watch that, he's lifting the stick, and that's what you're supposed to do. It's what you're told to do today. You can't go over top. you got to go underneath. Anyway, this youngster is uh, amazing. His positioning and the puck finding him. Condor looking and uh, lots of availability. No chance there for Oscar Dansk. Now they are talking to DeRogier about coming out with a two goal lead the Wolves do have. So if they get control of this puck, I'm sure they'll be calling for the goalie. Yep. I'm not sure. I'm surprised. Why wouldn't you go now? You haven't got enough time. Oh my goodness. Goes back to the point with Bay Ruther. Now they call for the net miner. Giriano's shot went wide. Hanley has it, tried to center. Here's Nick Hag sending it up the boards. Kept in. Bayreuther shot. Skipped through. White Cloud will rim it out. It will Curling. go all the way down for an icing with three seconds remaining. You're trailing by two with 30 seconds and you're holding your goalie in the net because you don't have complete control. I don't understand that at all. But that was the case. And fired down with 2.8 seconds remaining. So it basically comes down to a puck drop here. A shot Ooh. by Dolan. One last stop <laughs> by Dansk, and then he covers it up, and we'll have to drop it one more time. I lied to you, folks. Sorry. Well, again, 2.8 seconds remain, so there's half a second. Just shows you what can happen very quickly. Face off straight back, and something on it from Dowling. Oscar was uh, ready for it, though. That is the last puck drop. And the Wolves win their 31st game of the season, doubling up Texas 4-2. to two. Well, Oscar was terrific. That's good to see after not starting the last three games. And uh, the Wolves played a strong uh, game overall. Good to see. And it's a nice homestand so far. First four games, eight points. Well, let's take a look at the third period scoring summary presented by Affy Temple, the original Carmel Apple. Joel Lesperance would make things interesting in the third period. He nets his 28th of the season from Condra and Gleason. Then the Wolves would come right back to restore a three goal lead, a five on three power play goal for Dylan Coughlin, his 10th of the season three point game for Daniel Carr, and two for Masick. They assist. Joel Lasperat scores his second of the game, his 29th of the season to put Texas back within two. And that gets us to the final score of four to two.